While many investors have been focused on rising rates and the risk of a recession, the first three months of this year saw the tech-heavy Nasdaq index notch its best quarter since 2020. So what's driving this recent performance and where might it head from here? Here to discuss Jim Kelleher, Director of Research at Argus Research. Jim, great to have you back on the show. Good afternoon, Greg, and thank you for having me. All right, Jim, so after a pretty rough uh, 2022 across a lot of asset classes, including tech, uh, quite a first quarter performance for some of these names. So what was happening there? Well, going back to 2022, uh, if you recall, the tech sector declined about 20% within the NASDAQ decline. And actually, earnings were holding up well. Companies were still building their backlogs, and they performed well. Now you get to 2023 in the first quarter. Uh, earnings were down as reported in January for the fourth quarter, and they'll be down again in the first quarter as reported in April and May. And yet the tech sector is up uh, over 20% year to date. And I guess the way we explain that is that the market is anticipatory. Uh, investors already have digested all the bad news in the market, including the uh, you know inflation-driven weakness in consumer devices like PCs and smartphones, and they are they're uh, skating to the puck, right? They expect the market to get better as we go along, and there already are a few hopeful signs out there. But we definitely have some weakness in the near term in terms of fundamentals, and at the same time, we have a positive stock environment. Let's talk about that near term then, because of course we have another earnings season right on our doorstep. At some point, we're gonna be hearing from the tech companies. Uh, you said there briefly that you expect to perhaps another uh, tough quarter for some of these names. What should we be bracing for? Well, I think the tech sector will have negative earnings in this quarter within an overall negative earnings quarter for the S&P 500 here in the U.S. Uh, and certain areas like semiconductors should be particularly weak. Other areas like enterprise software and communications equipment will do a little better. Uh, but we're still going through this digestion phase. We had this hyper growth phase in smartphones and PCs uh, in the wake of the uh, of the pandemic and the supply chain crisis caused companies to overload their inventories, double ordering in many cases. And this, so the distribution chain got very clogged and now that's all working itself out. Um, and we do expect PC sales to swing back uh, to something closer to more positive year over year, but the comp comparisons will be easier, but it's going to take a while. We saw a very weak uh, first quarter PC sales down over 29%, which was similar to what occurred uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, global PC unit sales down in the high 20% range for two straight quarters. Yeah, IDC uh, with its latest uh, report today and talking about that uh, slump that they're seeing in PC demand. Obviously, there's a certain cyclicality to it and things got out of whack uh, during the pandemic. In my household, everyone, okay, including me, I was going to exclude myself, everyone including me got a new computer. So we're not going to buy one mm -hmm. for a little while. How does that cycle play out coming out of the pandemic? Well, uh, we're still seeing a filtering back to offices, so there's still a overdue upgrade cycle for enterprise and business PC refresh, but that's being pushed out a little bit because the return to office has been kind of mixed to slow. And people did, uh, you know, initially everybody was kind of bootstrapping in 2020, whatever you had on hand, you made do with. 2021 and early 2022 were the years in which you upgraded your hybrid home work environment. And so everyone is sitting in a pretty good, a better position there. Uh, but those those uh, products will need upgrade too because the demands of uh, the modern workspace just keep going up, and uh, every every software upgrade puts more strain on your existing PC and device. And 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 also we you know we see other factors, uh, growth in the global middle class. So maybe the best growth in PCs is not going to be North American based. It'll probably be. Uh, Asian, South American base, but you know we do see the cycle playing through as it always does. Now we started off by talking about uh, what a strong quarter the Nasdaq had, uh, the best quarterly performance since uh, the early days of the pandemic, that first year of the pandemic. But as I take a look at the chart, uh, we're still well off of the highs. I, I know some people who have mm -hmm. been watching the show were thinking, okay, it was one thing to see that rally after the losses for the sector, but if they're in the positions where they're wondering, do we ever get back to where we were? I mean, what would that take? What would the market have to look like for to reclaim those highs? Well, for the market overall, um, 
first of all, you're going to need to get out of this cycle of, of uh, rising rates. You need to have a global stabilization of rates. Markets can handle a higher level of rates. What they can't handle is movement in rates. And once we get to a steadying in rates, that probably means we've got to a steadying and a lower level of inflation. Inflation is the one thing stock markets cannot handle. Um, but uh, I think when we come out, I'm going to speak from the technology perspective now. We're seeing a traditional cycle here where PCs and smartphones are driving the weakness in the tech sector, and that's what always happened. But there's so many more drivers in technology now. I mean, tech companies used to sell to one another. Now they sell to the world. And we've seen technology, sensors, automation, uh, electrification of vehicles, uh, semi-autonomous and autonomous driving. All these things are driving great demand for technology components, semiconductor software outside the traditional tech industry. And so, you know, coupled with AI and the cloud, uh, we're going to see as as we get the traditional drivers to recover, that is PCs and smartphones, and those other parts of the market to take off, the tech sector is going to get you know bigger than it ever was, and the demand should come back in a another strong cycle coming out of this. Yeah, the timing argument, is the question. Yeah, the argument that does make a lot of sense, Jim, is the fact that you know even though you you're going through a cycle right now, and we're seeing weakness in certain areas, uh, technology is not going anywhere. I mean, longer term, if an investor is looking at the longer horizon, it's not we're just going to turn around and say, I don't think we need all this technology anymore. Thanks. We'll just we'll just go back to where we were. Right. I do also think that the tech sell-offs, the cycles, are shorter and shallower uh, because although. You know, we have we, we did see a hyper growth phase in PCs and smartphones, and the harder we came, the harder we fell, right? Uh, but, you know, the demand for, for example, industrial and automotive semiconductors is really smoothing the semiconductor cycle out, taking out some of that cyclical lumpiness. And there's certain names we'll talk about later that we think are really well positioned to serve those markets.